I want to show you a clip taken from a uh, longer post from the former president uh, just posted on Truth Social. It's called election interference. They're trying to destroy a reputation so they can win an election. That's just as bad as doing any of the other things that have been done over the last number of years. I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. Uh, I'm innocent, and we will prove that very, very soundly and hopefully very quickly. I want to talk more about uh, the, the possible charges. Uh, Ellie Honig, uh, Maggie Haberman was reporting conspiracy to obstruct, false statements, willful retention of defense information. So a few really important indicators in Maggie's reporting that she just gave us on air. First of all, Maggie reported that there is a document retention charge, and that tells us that this is not all obstruction. There had been some question, is this only going to be an obstruction case? No, according to Maggie's reporting, there's a document retention charge or charges, and separately, as Maggie just reported, there's an obstruction angle. So it's not all about obstruction, it's documents and obstruction. Maggie also reported, she just told us, that none of the charges are the same. You can have, in a federal indictment, multiple counts of the same crime four counts of obstruction, et cetera. This tells us that there are, again, according to Maggie's reporting, seven different counts. We know one of them is conspiracy from prior reporting. And then the last thing that Maggie tells us is that there's an obstruction count and a false statements count, meaning somebody in Trump's camp or Donald Trump himself knew about or made or authorized the false statement, presumably either to archives or to DOJ. So we're getting indicators from Maggie and Paula's reporting. Uh, Robert Ray, you were former uh, Whitewater Independent Counsel. What do you make of what we've heard thus far? I think the venue was probably one that the Department of Justice felt that they were stuck with because I think there are charges contained in this indictment that could only have been brought in the Southern District of Florida. So I think that's sort of the first significant thing. What, what would those, what would that be? Probably the obstruction, things that happened in Mar-a-Lago that only could have, have happened in Mar-a-Lago, that they are charging those things that happened in Mar-a-Lago. And if that's the, the gravamen of a particular charge, that would be the only place that charge could be brought. Mm -hmm. And then I think the, 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 the related to that is because it is in the Southern District of Florida, and although there's a court appearance uh, scheduled in Miami, I think for administrative reasons, you would expect this case, if it in, is centered around Mar-a-Lago, to be one that would draw from a Palm Beach County jury pool and a judge assigned to that particular vicinage. Why, why is that? Because, again, that's where the, um, that's where the alleged crime is, is, uh, is alleged to have taken place, and you would expect, therefore, to um, for the case under the Constitution, the, the case is brought in the district nearest to where the, uh, the, the charge is, um, is, is, is located and filed and where the, uh, the facts are. So the defendant has a right to a jury pool um, from that location, and that location happens to be Palm Beach County. Well, the, the, I think the, the, the jurisdiction, as you say, is critical to this. The jury pool is critical. The, the charges are critical. And as Maggie has reported, seven charges, uh, including, you know, conspiracy to obstruct, uh, obstruction of justice, false statements. This is not just one charge of alleged witch hunt by prosecutors. This is quite serious. But here's the thing. We have a, a jury of law that is going after him, which is quite serious. But Donald Trump is trying to make his case, whether it's on Truth Social or with his people. I have a friend that met with him yesterday in Bedminster. He is not worried about this whatsoever. He is relaxed. He is resolute. He is um, telling his people he has done nothing wrong. He is in innocent. This is a witch hunt. And here's the thing. There's, there's going to be two com competing factions here. There is the court of law, which is quite serious and is going to come down heavy and hard on Donald Trump in the next few days. And then what Donald Trump thinks he's going to get away with the court of public opinion and the political spectrum. And his base and his supporters are going to support him. Whatever he says, they're going to believe him Good. and they are doubling down and he will be um, more emboldened with his base on this. But these are serious charges. And w when this comes down, um, the, the heavy arm of the law is going to be swift and firm yeah, Robert, on Donald Trump. Robert, just in terms of the... It's not going to be so swift. <laughs> in terms of the historic nature of this, yeah. what, what do you... I mean, how do you see this? Look, I, um, I will believe it when I see it, but I, I find it hard to imagine how there is going to be a trial of these charges, which is what, what one would ordinarily expect sometime next year, which happens to be 2024, and an election cycle. 
the charges are serious enough and the, the evidence seems to be voluminous enough that I wouldn't think this would be a two or three day trial. This is likely to be a two or three week or longer trial. And I cannot imagine under the Constitution where the defendant is required and has the obligation to be present and has a right to be present, that he's going to take and be afforded uh, two to three weeks to sit in a courtroom trying this case in 2024, on top of which the Manhattan DA, DA's office's case is another probably two or three week trial. I just don't see how we are going to have two I, trials I next year. Can I ask you a question? The former like, president. Like, I don't see that that's possible. I want to stick with the lawyers for right, right yeah. now. Ellie, do you yeah. agree with that? I do agree with that analysis, actually. You have to think about this practically. Okay, we have a trial date in the Manhattan case late March, March 25th. That's going to take you into April. You have to build in some time to prep for each case. No way that I can see that this federal case gets tried before that. You'd have to start in January or February. That's not going to be enough time. Trump is going to fight this. He's going to bring motions. There's going to be voluminous discovery. So now we're saying, okay, if the Manhattan DA case holds March into April, you can't just have back-to-back -back trials. As Robert said, you have a constitutional right to prepare your defense, to participate in your defense. So you have to build in even more time. Now we're where? A year from now, the summer of 2024, when we're right upon conventions, when we're months away from an actual presidential election, I don't think a judge is going to do that. If, if I'm a prosecutor, I don't want to try this case consistent with DOJ policy, but also as a strategic matter in, let's say, August, September 2020. Can I, can I just ask a question? What if Donald Trump were elected president? Well, we then what that. happens? <laughs> well, this, 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 this is yeah. gone. Yeah. Because, first of all, he would control the Justice Department. So if you're talking about this case... He controls the Justice Department. Just he just dismisses the, the 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 if it's still pending, he dismisses the case. It's gone. Yeah. Couldn't he pardon himself? Or well, that, there's a debate about that. But he if it's a pending case, he just basically withdraws the authority of the United States behind the prosecution. Mm -hmm. and, I think he, and, and and he has the absolute right to do that. The conversation we just heard is a conversation that lawyers had with Donald Trump months ago. Oh, I'm sure that's this right. Explains why he threw his hat in the ring, this explains the whole deal. He has gamed this thing out, and he thinks he's going to get away with it. What I would say to everybody who's watching this, uh, nobody has seen this indictment. We don't know what's in it. Uh, Republicans are jumping out there saying this is all about you know, Joe Biden. Joe Biden has nothing to do with this as a special prosecutor. Uh, this is not a porn star thing. This isn't robbing the piggy bank of your charity. This is the federal government talking about possible espionage. And a presidential candidate that has gamed this thing out to get away with it by running for office. If that's what's happening here, we should take this very, very seriously. Yeah, no, and I think, you, I think people do. People around this table do, and a lot of people in America do. But Allison, myself, and others on the Republican side have been talking to our friends, and the ride-or-die Trumpers, right? They want to abolish the FBI. They don't trust the FBI. They don't trust any of this stuff, man. This is deep state coming after the president. So th this doesn't... This, it, it's, it is not going to matter. He's going to have a big rally... Sure. On Saturday, he's going to have a big rally in Georgia, North Carolina. I promise when he shows up on Tuesday, it'll look like a Trump rally outside that Miami date. You remember the Brooks Brothers riot in 2000? Mm -hmm. That'll look like a, a Boy Scout camp compared and, to what's going to happen the, on and Tuesday. This is, and this is to me when constitutional conservatives need to stand up. Uh, at, at a certain point, people have to be uh, clear. When the, We have a system of laws. Uh, there's a reason to special prosecutor. This was not the normal... If, listen, if it's a normal thing, if it was handled in an inappropriate way, they took a very long time to do this. And I don't understand how you can be a patriot and then at the same time stand by while people are running into the ground, law enforcement, running right. into, into the ground, uh, our system... <coughs> no, but, 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 Van, Donald Trump's whole political project has been to disqualify... Uh, rules, laws, norms, and institutions to disqualify the media, to disqualify the FBI, to disqualify the Justice Department for the express purpose of uh, being able to make the case when these things come that this is a corrupt system. And the question is, how much take-up will they have? I suspect among his base that's going to happen. J minutes, at, sec yeah, minutes, I guess, after this indictment was announced, Jim Jordan was already tweeting, this is a sad day for America, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. But I expect to see a lot of House Republicans sort of galvanized yeah. here and that's attacking right. the Justice Department. And, and you... Like, look, this is espionage, potential espionage here. This is absolutely serious. But we can all remember back before January 6th, Steve Bannon telling um, the world 
hell will break out on January 6th. I'm not uh, convinced that the exact same thing is not going to happen when all of this becomes public and all of those people that were at the Capitol on January 6th will, will have hell breaking loose, whether it is in South Florida or Washington, D.C., 10 times more. I know it may not be sufficient for many, but, you know, understand that uh, the former president also has limits. The public doesn't seem to recognize that, but he will obey process. He will appear at 3 p.m. in a Miami courthouse to answer the federal charges next week. He's not ignoring the process. He didn't ignore the process before the Manhattan DA's office. He has the right to dispute the uh, the merits of a prosecution, which he's fully going to do. Is he going to take advantage of the political process? You bet. And you would expect him to do so. I, I don't think the country is going to fall to pieces as a result of the fact that he is going to contest these charges.